Aluminum is a pretty tricky metal to weld. Today we're going to show you exactly how not to weld aluminum with MIG welding. Now I know I said aluminum is tricky, but really it's not. If I give a, a machine that's already set up to somebody and say this one's ready to go, all you got to do is push and run, most people can get this aluminum MIG welding down pretty quick. It's just the machine setup and making sure you have everything right to sync up to make this weld easy. We're going to run off the Lincoln Electric Power MIG 350 MP. This is a little bit of an older model, but it's got all the duty cycle and beans we need. We've got some big boy wire on here. If you start going down in wire size, you have a little bit of problems with the wire because it is a softer material. So getting it to run a length of cable through your MIG gun is usually a problem. But so running a different type of wire like 5356, which is what we have today, tends to hold up a little bit better than 4043. It's 116th. 5356 wire. As far as drive rolls go, obviously the right size, but we're gonna be looking for a U-groove roller. Instead of the V for MIG or the knurled for flux core, we're looking for a U-groove roller because it will keep that wire from getting pinched and breaking off at this point. Setting our tension right, not too tight, because again, this aluminum is softer, it's pretty crucial. If you're fighting wire feeder problems, it's usually those issues, and you gotta check them. And as far as the settings, almost every welder has somewhere to start as a baseline. We are gonna be running 5356, and we've got our settings over here. I've run some practice speeds and I think I got it where I like it. As you may know, we're not running a typical spool gun setup. So let me show you how that's even gonna work out for us. Now, one of the biggest reasons why a spool gun exists is the spool of wire is actually located on the actual MIG gun. This really helps because it only has a short distance to travel and you end up nipping a lot of those problems in the butt because it doesn't have a long way to go. You can opt to just run a normal MIG gun with a Teflon liner with those U-groove rollers and you can make it about 10 feet tops. Now, if you wanna get any further, you need to look at other options like a spool gun or if you wanna keep running bigger spools without changing them out and you still wanna get some distance, we're in Abacor Benzel's ITC Center, so I dug around and found one of these Freedom Drives. It's pretty neat, kind of a little happy medium with a push-pull setup. It has this drive roll system here that pulls the wire along while the machine is still pushing wire through so that we're able to make it a lot greater distance. Now we got the machine set up as far as where the wire goes, the rollers, all that's good. We got our voltage to 22 and then we can adjust our wire feed from the gun here. We're gonna be closer to like 350. That's where we're gonna kind of start today. We also wanna make sure we're on DCEP, direct current electrode positive. As far as the MIG gun's plugged in, we don't wanna run negative. However, with today's experiment, I've got a few coupons here. We're gonna show you a good weld, and then we're gonna start changing some of those variables like the polarity or travel speed or voltage or wire feed so that you can see maybe what kind of bad welds you're making, and then we can fine tune you to get a nice weld on the plate. We got our 2F little fillet weld here, a lap joint, pretty simple. Always line up for where you're gonna finish, not where you start so that you finish comfortable. We want a nice push angle on this. We've got our argon set to around 30 CFH and we're gonna maintain closer to the three quarters of an inch arc length compared to three eighths with MIG uh, steel, you know, short circuit. We're gonna be in the spray transfer and we're just gonna push it. No whipping, no pausing. We're gonna make a nice solid bead. I don't know if that was an example of the best weld that we could have made. We had a really crunchy sound to it. You really want to listen to this type of weld. Not only that, but there was just crazy evidence, a ton of spatter. We might need to up our voltage up a little bit. We have this really heavy duty 16th inch wire. We need to make sure we have enough voltage to get it done. That was a good example there of having too much wire feed and not enough voltage. Let's turn our voltage up a little bit and see if we can't mitigate some of those problems. At the very beginning of this weld, I had some sound issues. It sounded a little bit better than prior now that we have a little bit more voltage for the wire, but it still had that short circuit sound. It still sounded crunchy. And remember what I said, we were looking for about three quarters of an inch contact tip to work distance, and I was closer to the three eighths. I noticed once I pulled away, we were looking pretty good. But as I started working across this plate, see this nasty, nasty bit at the end, it's almost at the point where we have too much of that push angle and we got too carried away and that argon shielding gas that we needed to make a good clean weld kind of dissipated and we get a lot more schmutz. So this is a good example of contact tip to work distance and gun angle. We're gonna try this again on another coupon and really try to make sure that we're maintaining more perpendicular. We've got the right contact tip to work distance all the way across. Going for the right arc length. Trying to stay, listen for that weld. I don't want it to sound too crunchy. That usually happens when you're getting too close. Making sure that wire is sitting in the right spot. I got the right travel speed for the red size I'm looking for. 
trying to maintain a push angle. It might be the wire I'm using that we're, we had sitting for a while, but. I'm not getting the cleanest weld that I'd really like to see. As you can see, comparatively speaking to this weld right here, we're throwing a lot less spatter, but we got a little bit more shine on it. The biggest difference was we had a lot more wire for the voltage there. We got a better sized weld. Just seems like the puddle's dirtier than I'd like to see it. It looks a lot better at the beginning, the way the things are sitting down, comparatively speaking, you know, maybe maintaining an angle is how we're gonna fix things. But if you have any advice for me in the comments, leave them down there. Outside of this, we are gonna start fooling around with some angles, some polarity changes, and really see what some nasty welds look like. All right, for this beautiful weld joint, we're gonna start with the voltage and wire feed speed. We're gonna go over to the machine and turn down our volts somewhere in the short circuit range. Let's see what happens now. We haven't adjusted our wire feed. We just got too low a voltage. Definitely a lot more spatter. That bleed isn't one to lay down. It looks a little cooler. Honestly, outside of the fact that the weld is curled, it's still not too low. We're gonna go back to the machine and go past where we were, somewhere around 28 volts. That should definitely be hot as can be. Whoa, I'd say that's extremely hot. Well, that was crazy. This wire is just getting vaporized before it gets to the plate. If you got that voltage way up there and not enough wire, you got a lot of problems on your hands. Now let's turn the voltage back down to where we had it, closer to 22.5, and now we're going to adjust our wire feed speed. We're gonna turn it up to like 600. Now, remember, wire feed speed is directly related to your amperage, so it should penetrate a lot more. Yeah, I don't think we need to get too far into that. Straight through the backside here. Let's we'll see what happens if we have not enough wire. So again, we can adjust it right here. We can even have a second set of adjustment on the actual freedom drive itself, where you have kind of an aggressive change, and then this is kind of your fine tuning. We're gonna turn it all the way down to about 170. Not having enough wire, that's a good way to mess up a weld. Like I was saying, when you do aluminum really bad, it looks really, really bad. And of course, not having enough wire coming out for the voltage we had definitely welded that aluminum right to the copper tip. And we're gonna have to put a new, new contact tip on. We didn't even make any weld. Now looking at it back here, you can see there's a visible hole in it. Remember, your wire feed speed is your amperage and this wire, especially at 1 16th inch diameter, will dig a freaking hole. To this point, this is where our voltage is too high. And as you can see, it's super hot as far as the well goes. And then the voltage too low with those curls in the toes. This one probably worked out the best, but you got to remember without having the proper penetration, that weld just might be as good as a cock gun. The next thing we're going to change is our drag angle versus push angle as well as our polarities. Now again, remember I told you, you wanna to try to maintain a nice push angle. From my understanding, it's really got to do a lot with the gas coverage and the fact that we're running on DC positive, which is more of the cleaning action when it comes to welding this aluminum. If we change that drag angle, I think it does affect the actual coverage of gas and the cleaning effect that you'll have on the metal. And you'll see that when we're finished. We're gonna start with a push and then we're gonna change into a drag about halfway across. And as we get across this plate, we're going to change angles. Oops. There's going to be a time and place where you're going to have to eventually move around and have to do a push or a drag, especially if you're working around different angles. Besides this big lump that I left where I got hung up, you can see that the etching is a little bit easier to see and we have a cleaner looking weld afterwards where if we start switching to a drag angle, we don't seem to have as much of a width on the etching effect. Now that might just be me, but it seems to make a less clean weld potentially. Let us know in the comments what really is the biggest effect of pushing versus pulling your MIG gun when you're MIG welding aluminum. Because in my opinion, you're gonna have to eventually do it. You wanna be welding gas metal arc welding aluminum on the same polarity you would run it on steel. On DC positive polarity, you have more cleaning action on the actual aluminum itself, which is gonna be great for aluminum because of that thick oxide that it has. But now we're gonna take this same machine 
and swap those polarities. Now, why on earth would they be DC negative in the first place? Well, maybe you have a, a multi-process machine that you just got done TIG welding and that's where the ground was set up. Or maybe you're running some self-shielded flux core and you're running DC negative and you just swapped out wires and you didn't bother changing this. So maybe, just maybe, this might be your problem. And all you gotta do is switch two little nuts. Now, I've never actually done this before because you just ain't supposed to. That's a good way to ruin a perfectly good coupon. If we're running DC negative polarity or DC straight, we've got the majority of our heat now into the base metal and less into our actual filler metal. This is 30% of the heat and this is 70% of the heat. And remember on DC positive, you get more of that cleaning action. Whereas DC negative, you get a lot of that penetration. We've got zero penetration on this plate. We only got globs of crap. There was no cleaning to be done to get past that oxide layer. So we're just dropping mad bombs that aren't fusing to just about anything. Just come right off. Definitely don't do DC negative. The last thing that we're going to cover is contact tip to work distance. Just where is that sweet spot with gas metal arc welding aluminum? It's really similar to steel welding and spray transfer. Really the best way that you're going to be able to tell if you're in the right spot is just by listening to it. This what happens when it gets too close. And you start to get a really violent sound, which you can get away with. And it works pretty good. But we want to be a little bit further away and listen to that two spot. And if we get too far away, we're going to notice the wall is going to get a lot dirtier and a lot harder to move around. That's why we've got to find that two spot and maintain it. Now looking over this, I'll be honest, we were closer to three quarters of an inch back here and I don't, I don't love it as much as me getting a lot closer. That looks like the weld that I'm trying to achieve. And then we pull it back a little bit and we start hearing it a little bit better. Now you can definitely tell when we get way out of our gas coverage and we get too far away, we've got a, just a mess of weld right here. And we start to push back into it and get our bead back again. I'm gonna try one more weld and I'm really gonna try to hone in all these variables to try to make one more better weld <laughs> than the first one I made. Well, I tried to stack dimes there, but I think I just stacked problems. Just stick to just pushing it. I think it's pretty obvious I still have a few things to work on and maybe listen to my own advice and start fiddling around with this gas metal arc welding aluminum a little bit better. Let me know what I can work on. I'm always looking to grow and get better as a welder myself. Now, this is probably one of the processes that I've least touched on. The only time I've ever used it was with the spool gun and using something like this was pretty helpful. It's a lot more comfortable than having one of those big bulky spool guns and all that wire and weight on the back of it. Having just a regular MIG gun definitely felt a lot better. I appreciate you guys all for watching and I hope you took some value out of it. I know what I need to work on. Hopefully you do too. We'll see you on the next one. About 170. Hello? You coming out or what? Tight connections are happy connections. You gotta turn on the machine too. That would help. All right, some words of advice and encouragement for myself. <clears throat> Don't suck.